This unity candle is a representative of the light of Christ that lives within each soul. Not only here in this room or in this community, but in the whole planet. For I believe that there is a light that shines in the hearts and souls of all people, of all races, all nationalities, all faith beliefs. And so today, as we pay attention to this burning flame, recognize it not only for yourself, but for your neighbors and your friends and those people you don't know around the world. For that light of Christ dwells in us all richly. Dwells in us all richly. And I welcome you all to Unity by the Sea. It's been a long time since I've done this, so just forgive me along the way. <laughs> I'm Reverend Susan Dorn. For those of you who don't know me, I um, come from Portland every, almost every month now, without August, but starting September, I'll be here once a month on the fourth Sunday. Uh, my background is I am an uh, ordained minister through a New Thought Church called Christ Love Ministries. And our ministry is one without walls and without doors. We are a pray, praying ministry. And so what we do, seven days a week, we pray. We pray for our world, we pray for individuals, we pray for ourselves, we pray. So that's part of my background. Um, and speaking of which, there is of course this prayer box. And there are little sheets that you can, you can ask for prayer, which are prayed for here in town every day. And once a month, every prayer in the prayer box is sent to Unity, I'll call it Unity National, sorry. Um, and they continue to pray them, for them for a month. So there are prayer slips here. There are prayer slips in the back. So um, please make yourself available to that prayer. And now we open. And I ask you to look at this candle and its light and take in a breath and gently release it. And one more, and release it. And I suggest you might want to close your eyes and take in a breath and release it. For know that where you are right this moment is exactly where you are to be. You are here in the presence of love. You are here in the sanctuary of peace. You are here the indwelling Christ living among us. And today, through all of the words and the talk and the music and the fellowship, it is all good and very good. And it brings you the opportunity for joy, for fellowship, for love. For all the blessings of unity by the sea, I give thanks and praise, and so it is. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a song. It is a song some of you may know. I've known it since I was a child. Do you? And I don't know why. Randy didn't know it. But we're going to do it. Do you want me to do Oh, no. Opening song. Sorry. Yeah. I'm well, I'm, if we're going to stick with the deal. I'm going to be quiet and let us do our opening song. <laughs> And I don't know if it's in the program or not, so I'll just tell you your line. You have a line. Uh, here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. And your job is to look at someone or think of someone. Your eyes can be open or closed. Maybe you can look across the room if someone looks lonely or isolated and sing that line to them. But where? You'll know when it comes. You'll know when it comes. Here's to the babies in a brand new world. Here's to the beauty in the stars. Here's to the travelers on the open road. Here's to the dreamers in the bars. 
Here's to the teachers in a crowded room. Here's to the workers in the fields. Here's to the preachers of the silent world. Here's to the drivers at the wheel. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Here's to the doctors and their healing work. And here's to the loved ones in their care. Here's to the strangers on the street tonight. Here's to the lonely everywhere. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Here's to the wisdom from the mouths of babes. Here's to the lions in the cage. Here's to the struggles of the silent war. Here's to the closing of the age. Here's to you, my love, with blessing from above. Let the day begin. Here's to you, my love, with blessing from above. Let the day begin. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Let the day start. Thank you. I've missed that song. Okay, so now you get to sing again. Sorry. This is what happens when, you know, I'm not here for a year and a half. So... We do have a congregational song. And like I said, I've known it since I was a little kid, but many people don't know it. The words are very, very simple. Except I can't remember the first word, but that's OK. <laughs> um, I really, it's just blanked out. One moment. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, it's the Take name a of little the song, love. right? Take a little love and pass it on. And we're going to do, well, despite what it might have said up there, we're going to do four verses. Love, smile, joy, and, and love again. But I'm going to sing it through once with the love, and then I'll ask you to join in, and that's when we'll start with love. We'll figure this out. <laughs> and I'm just going to stay here. Is that okay? Okay. Hit it, maestro. <laughs> Take a little love and pass it on. Take a little love and pass it on. And before you know it, the world will start to show it if you take a little love and pass it on. Okay, love, here we go. Take a little love and pass it on. Take a little love and pass it on. And before you know it, the world will start to show it if you take a little love pass it on smile take a little smile and pass it on take a little smile and pass it on and before you know it the world will start to show it if you take a little smile and pass it on joy take a little joy and pass it on take a little joy and pass it on and before you know it the world will start to show it if you take a little joy and pass it on. Now we're going to do this quietly and slowly and think about it. Take a little love and pass it on. Take a little love and pass it on. And before you know it, the world will start to show it if you take a little love and pass it on. Excellent. Isn't that great? <laughs> so next in line, I give thanks for Diane because she is willing to, to read today's daily word. So, and I got your name right. <laughs> Oh, 
my first time. <laughs> <clears throat> my life's journey begins and ends in the heart of God. I feel excitement at the beginning of a journey, thinking about the adventures, the beautiful sights, and the fascinating people I will find at my journey's end. Even as I look forward to reaching my destination, however, I remain alert, open to the adventures and insights that await discovery along the way. My faith tells me that my spiritual journey began in the heart of God long before my human birth. In childhood, I looked outward, longing for the adventures that would become waypoints on my journey to maturity. Now I journey inward, longing for the spiritual home I never really left. I am learning that even the most ordinary day can become an opportunity to realize that the heart of God is present everywhere. The Lord will keep you going in, going out, and you're coming in from this time on and forevermore. Psalms 121.8. Thank you so much. And now we have our monthly affirmations, which you'll find in your bulletin. And I will put my glasses on. And if you will repeat with me, I'll wait till you get yours too. So our July affirma affirmation begins, unity by the sea is grateful for peace and freedom, which is made perfect in our life by the loving grace of God. And for ourselves, I am grateful for peace and freedom, which is made perfect in my life by the loving grace of God. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved Randy is going to play for us and sing it. Yeah. And I spent far too much time fretting over what song to do in this spot, so I put everything down and told myself I was going to come back in five minutes and it would present itself, and it did, my God. So uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, sometimes the heart of God is quiet, quiet, quiet. Be still. <laughs> and paradoxically enough, this is not a quiet song. <clears throat> Well, the good news is quiet. The good news is still. The good news is quiet. In spite of your will. The good news is quiet. The good news is still. It's all so clear that the good news is right here. Get down on your knees. Try hard to please. Standing high on a chair. Throw your arms in the air. Asleep or a prayer. The good news is right there. Get an A on your test. Think you're better than the best. Listen to the radio, then you know that you know that you know. You can shake with fear, but the good news is right here. The sun doesn't have to shine, and the wind doesn't have to blow. Doesn't matter at all. If you're in the front row, you can win it all. Stand taller than tall. It's not something you'll read. It's not a sight to see. You can close your eyes. 
believe all the lies cover your ears thinking you might not hear but you don't have a choice it's in the still small voice said the good news is quiet the good news is still the good news is quiet in spite of your will good news is quiet the good news is still and it's all so clear that the good news that the good news is here little granola stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh, so it is just so exciting to be here in person with people. How exciting. It's been a long time. And it's not a Zoom service. Oh, I don't know if any of you participated in Zoom services in the last 17 months. The two that I participated in were interesting <laughs> interesting it's like we got together in the zoom room and pers a person the the leader tried to get us to engage with each other so she'd call upon us to have us say something it's like i i just want to be quiet and then the music was pre-taped so there was no live musician and the, the talk was pre-taped is but okay so here we are we are together, we are live, we make mistakes, and we know that it's all God. It's all good. And it's a gift just to be in the sanctuary of peace, because it's still a sanctuary of peace. So, as I said earlier, I come down from Portland, and I bring with me words that might be of wisdom, but more than anything, they're from my heart. They're from that love presence that's within me. And most of the time, it's inspired by whatever the daily word is going to be for that Sunday. And so this is, there's no doubt about it, it was inspired by this. I also should tell you, because people who've heard me speak before know this already. On my drive down, you know, the two hours it takes me to drive in the sunshine and talking to God, I rewrite my talk at least twice. <laughs> And I did that today. So we don't know what will come out from my heart and what will be on the paper. So bear with me and just be still in love. So as, um, as was read, today's word began with, my life's journey begins and ends in the heart of God. And it talks about the, the excitement of a new journey, like when we go on vacation. What are we going to pack? What are we, where are we going to go? Who are we going to see? What's going to happen on today's journey or this vacation or this moment in time? And then it goes on to talk about our spiritual journey, which some of them are the same questions. What am I going to hear today? What am I going to learn today? How am I going to exemplify my spirit's journey? And it concludes, I am learning that even the most ordinary day can become an opportunity to realize that the heart of God is present everywhere, and I would add, every day and in everything. The heart of God is present every day in everything. Now, I could just pick that statement apart, but I'm not going to. Because I'm going to talk about the elephant in the universe called the last 18 months. The last 18 months uh, were not filled with ordinary days. Not what I would call ordinary days. They were different. They were different. But it was an adventure. But not one I definitely want to take again. Been there, done that. And I wouldn't particularly call those days exciting. I would, I would call them 
something like a scary giant ride and an amusement park called Jumping into Pandemic. A journey into the unknown for sure, but also a journey into what I thought was unthinkable. A journey I wasn't prepared for, but then I would no ha have no idea how to proceed with something like this. So it was a day-to-day -day thing. What do I do today to bring myself peace or to, to breathe? What do I do today to breathe? So how we prepared for these challenges, we did it. We did it day by day. Now, I don't know if it's true for you, but they've been rough. These 18 months have been rough. And, and I can affirm that I'm not the person I was then. It brought me to my knees on a journey of fear and anxiety and loneliness and far from the norm. I missed talking in person with my family and friends. And, and then we got hit with things other than COVID. We got hit with peaceful and not so peaceful marches. Black Lives Matter came to the forefront of our bodies and our minds. Racial injustice, mass shootings and riots, and not just in New York or Chicago, but in my city of Portland, Oregon. Weekly, sometimes daily. One of the peaceful marches walked within a quarter of a block of my house, and it was peaceful. And I stood on a corner and I went, yes, I believe in this. And then hours later, downtown Portland, mass shootings, riots. <sighs> what do you do? How do you bring peace out of that? How do you find love in all of this? And then the anxieties didn't stop there. Mother Nature got upset. Droughts, fires, catastrophes. Here in Oregon, around the world, more destruction, more, more, more. And it took us out of our comfort zone and there was no longer anything we could call normal. So often through these last months, I yelled to myself because truthfully I had no one else to yell at. My cats were doing perfectly well. So I would yell, stop Susan. Remember, my life's journey begins and ends in the heart of God today. Susan, stop. Stop listening to the chatter of your brain filled with fear and anxiety and instead listen to your heart. Susan, stop. Stop living in how things were and move forward into this new sense of life. Susan, stop living in yesterday. Go with what today has to offer and surrender to the newness of this day. Susan, remember, begin a journey from the heart based on the newness of today and what today has to offer and renew yourself today with a heart open to love. Realize that the heart of God is present in you every day. Now, the talk title is actually all about the journey of newness, our journey of newness. Now, listening to last week's talk, I heard Mike Tess sing this great song, Love Changes Everything, and it is so true. That idea, that concept of love, love will never, never let you be the same. So as we journey into this newness, this newness, this opening of our heart space to live that place of love and compassion, we have the power to challenge all that's gone before us into the newness of today. We can experience love from the voices of our heart, through the joy we experience in our hearts, and we can experience forgiveness from the center of our hearts. Love changes everything. My favorite quote from Cahill Gibran, 
and you all know it, and you probably will recite it with me. Yesterday is but a dream, tomorrow is but a vision, but today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Now, speaking of newness, the city of Portland this weekend is declaring and proclaiming a celebration downtown Portland that downtown Portland is open. Back to normal, they said. Okay, I don't necessarily agree with normal because there's still people living on the streets. There's still a mess, although much of it's been cleaned up. There's still businesses that have gone out of business and businesses that still have um, wood on their windows. They're still blocked up. But it is a proclamation of beginning to go forward. We had to go forward at some point, and this is where it is. That experience of creating and opening ourselves to a new format. I mean, here we are. This is like a newness for all of us. We haven't been here for months. Well, some of you were here last week, but months and months. But it's not exactly normal, but there's a sense of consistency, something that we remember. So the city of Portland is creating a new way of doing government, a new way of doing business, a new way to celebrate people, and they're having concerts and shows and speakers and bringing life back to the city of Portland, which was seeming pretty dead, pretty dead. And it too is a journey of the heart, journey of the heart of the city of Portland, journeys, no matter, in the, no matter the conditions, to the newness of each day. Now my beloved friend, Reverend Christine Green, sends out a little note every month. And the one she sent out this last weekend made me laugh, made me giggle, so I'm going to share the song that she shared in her, in her little blog. And you'll know it. Am I gonna sing it? Maybe. Slow down, you move too fast. You gotta make the morning last just kicking down the cobblestones, looking for fun and feeling groovy. Right? Right? Slow down. You know, people like the city of Portland, it's like they want to charge ahead and go back to normal. But you know what? Normal's different today. Slow down. Kick the cobblestones. Enjoy what you have right now. You at the beach, you have this gorgeous weather today. Gorgeous. The drive down was super. <sighs> Enjoy this freedom. Enjoy this moment because look, we can choose to wear masks or not because places are open. Places are open. Restaurants are open. Opening is beginning. Our hearts can be reopened and renewed. Now, not everything is normal. Not everything is going to be the same because it's been 18 months of difference, 18 months of differences. So let's look at a new journey, a chance to kick down the cobblestones and look toward tomorrow with the wisdom and experience that we've gathered in these last 18 months and doing it by opening our hearts to love with love for love. Several years ago, a journalist, Janice Williams, wrote in the Seattle Post Intelligencer, an open heart is a heart that feels comfortable saying, let's try. We'll find a way. Let's learn something new. An open heart that is not afraid. It knows how to endure sadness. It knows how to heal from how, and how to forgive. An open heart is loving and strong. It is most basic, in its most basic, an open heart is a heart that's not afraid to love deeply. It's not blind to cost or reason 
or practicality, but it's not necessarily governed by those. An open heart sees possibilities. It has vision. It has patience. An open heart is wise. So pretty much every day these last 17, 18 months, our hearts were overwhelmed with these new adventures, new adventures of the day. But it all gave us an opportunity to open us up to past relationships. I called people I hadn't called for years just to make sure they were okay. And then we renewed our friendships opened us up to greater compassion for people around the world. You'd see pictures and things of people struggling everywhere on the planet. And it just made my heart so open and so compassionate that they are not alone, because I'll be there for them too. It opened us up to receive compassion from others, which is sometimes the hardest part receiving love and compassion from others. So today it's a challenge for us to continue this new journey by moving forwards and towards fully healing our fears so we can step out of the, of the cage that we've hid in for months. Choose each and every day to live from the heart And what I found is that this pathway to opening the heart actually begins in forgiveness. Let me see, I have this great book. And this is a writing from author Andodia Judith. And I think it's appropriate here. The shift from the love of power to the power of love is the evolutionary thrust of our time. Love begins in our own hearts as we heal the hurts we've both caused and received. It moves through our bodies as we soften our body armor, yield to a deeper truth, and relax our hard stances against each other. It's extended to all through forgiveness and generosity. It is given wings by gratitude and ultimately finds its nest in peace. For here is the certainty of the future's next adventure. Love's luscious enterprise is standing with its doors wide open, offering appetizers for the banquet yet to come. The banquet yet to come. I'll get back to forgiveness in just a minute, but I want to take a moment to just remark on the opening ceremonies in Tokyo. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you watched it, but they gave such honor to those who have passed. Generations of those who have passed, not just through the pandemic, pandemic those who have been shot, killed, died of natural causes, but they gave this beautiful interpretive performance of that honoring and caring. And one of the announcers on NBC was reading off parts of what was meant by certain portions of it. And the quote that I just loved was, the world will see ourselves as one. That was the basis of one of the interpretive things. The world will see ourselves as one. And then they talked about the spirit of the athletes. How they, how they continued to practice, how they continued to work, with no idea whether they'd be able to play or not. And I can say it's true of musicians as well. The heart of the new musician was trying to find a place to play, trying to find a place to give that gift that we have wherever. So I don't know, early in the pandemic, there were shots of people on the balconies in Italy just sitting on their balconies playing their cello, playing a piano. Pretty soon people would start singing along with them on their balconies with their masks on because music had to be heard. Athletics had to be played. Ministers had to pray. Gardeners had to garden. There are parts of us that had to continue to exist, bringing us 
that sense of love within ourselves to share with other people and to share most especially with our own selves. It's been a, a remarkable journey. And there is newness today, and you know, who knows what the variant will do tomorrow, but we've come through this and we're here present. Our hearts, our minds, our voices here present. Now going back to forgiving, that was one of the things I had to learn these last many months in really forgiving. Forgiving myself for judging, being less than truthful with others, ignoring my own truth, forgiving those who might have acted unfriendly to me, those drivers, I swear, I forgave drivers, and not just the obvious people. Forgiving the unknown faces of people who stand opposed to my beliefs. That's their belief. There's no reason for me to hate them. I can disagree but no hate. Forgiving my judgments and the people who seem to judge me. Forgiving them. And this was a process. This was not something I did one day and went, oh, yay, there it is. And because it was a process, I actually wrote a prayer, which I'd never done before. I wrote a prayer that I could share. And if you find that it sparks something in you. I have some copies if you'd like them, and if you don't, that's really okay. So I called it a prayer of forgiveness. I live and act from a soul of love. To all whom I may have lied to, I ask forgiveness of them and surrender my lies to the light of Christ. To all whom I have shown anger or dislike, I ask forgiveness of them and surrender my judgment to the light of Christ. For all the lies, judgments, and untruths I've told myself about myself, I forgive me and I surrender myself to the light of Christ. O radiant Christ, giver of life, I surrender all to you. I surrender all to you. These months have proved that we are all in this world together and we are all uniquely different. And every person on the planet have had similar experiences. All of us, millions and millions and millions of people. It's more blatantly obvious today than perhaps yesterday that we're all more alike than we are different. And it's time to live our truth with compassion. So I suggest that we start this journey of newness by choosing what unifies us. Choosing compassion over intolerance. Choosing love above all else. And like the song concludes, let the morning time drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you. All is groovy. So let's take a minute to just meditate, to close our eyes, to be still, to think about what was said, to think about what your heart has to say. And if you're willing, I, I, you could look at the, the flame of Christ here, that light of eternal love, and breathe in and exhale. And breathe in love and exhale love. And if you want to close your eyes, breathe in compassion and be still. And every time you inhale, your lungs, your body, your mind, and your heart is filled with the love that has no opposite. 
this moment, every moment, every day. You have the opportunity to breathe in and accept all that you choose to experience. And as you exhale, you have the opportunity to release all that no longer fits in your reality. Consider for a time every day to just surrender to your breath. Pay attention to the light that is the spark of your soul. Consider qualities in your life. Act in kindness and compassion. Act in community and inclusion. Experience peace. Experience love from the voices of your heart. Joy through the experiences of your soul. And forgiveness from the center of your heart. In the midst of everything, I know there is harmony. At the center of every feeling, there is wholeness. And no matter the appearance, I know for each one of you here, there is peace. There is love. There is good. Namaste. Amen. We move now into that sacred place of offerings and blessings. And if you will take your offering in your hand, and if you have no offering, I ask that you put your hand on your heart because your presence here today is certainly a gift to me, to Randy, to this sanctuary. And repeat with me from your bulletin. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. Randy's going to tinkle a little bit while we take the offering. We, okay, I've totally lost your name, but that's all right, right? So he's going to read with us our statement of peace and pledge of peace. Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for love in the presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors the many names for God, the many paths to God, the many ways to worship God, for there is only one power and one presence of God, 
and that God loves each one of us equally. It is therefore the position of unity to urge all nations, their leaders, and their people to turn to God by whatever the name or guidance during these challenging times, to pursue peace, not war. For this is what honors the God of all our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our lifetime. Our pledge to attain peace in our lifetime. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion, and the fiddling together, and the little child shall lead them, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. And adding, I will not be part of the killing of any child, no matter how lofty the reason. Not my neighbor's child, not my child, not my enemy's child. Not by bomb, not by bullet, not by looking the other way. I will be the power that is peace. Amen. We will be the power that is peace. So, thank you for being here today. We're going to join, be our little circle. They still do that, right? Okay, good. <laughs> and words are in various places, but first we're going to go join in a circle. If I get something wrong, just tell me to do something right. I often do this part wrong. First of all, let us say into this circle, we have this opportunity of, of verbalizing some prayer requests here. So if there's anyone here that wants to add names to this circle of love, this circle of wholeness and peace, it will take a few moments to do that.